I was about to say y'all could be seated, but you really got the getting seated and up and down thing down. And that is great. Listen now for the words from our scriptures. Today we will be reading two scriptures, one Old Testament text in Isaiah and one gospel text in Matthew. <clears throat> so hear now what God is saying to God's people. From Isaiah chapter 65, starting in verse 17. For I am about to create new heavens and new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating, for I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sounds of weeping be heard or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in an infant that lives but a few days or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For the one who dies at a hundred will be considered a youth, and the one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the works of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children in calamity, for they shall be the offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer, and yet they are speaking, I will hear. For the wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat the straw like an ox, but the serpent, its food, shall be dust. And they shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. And now we move to our text in Matthew chapter 6. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today your daily, our daily bread. Forgive our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God's kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Today's gospel reading likely sounds rather familiar to you. It is, of course, the scripture that we get what we call the Lord's Prayer from, a prayer that Christians pray together each and every week. We prayed it just this morning. God's kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. We pray it each week. But how often... Do we actually take time to consider, to think, to even dream about what that would look like? God's kingdom, or God's way of ordering the world, or God's way of sharing resources probably doesn't quite look like the world we know. Just this week, another, we had another incident of violence perpetrated against children. This week was Transgender Day of Remembrance, where we set aside time to remember our transgender brothers and sisters who are often and still the victims of violence. This week, war has waged on. This week, people have slept in the cold. So where is this kingdom come? Where is this as it is in heaven? Isaiah and the people of Israel are wrestling with the same question. To understand the impact of the words of Isaiah, we have to understand the audience so that we can have a context for understanding who Isaiah was speaking to. Isaiah was speaking to people who were in the midst 
of de devastation, oppression, and violence. Sounds rather familiar, doesn't it? The people of Israel had finally made it into the promised land that they had longed for for so many years after being slaves in Egypt, only to be invaded by the Babylonians and exiled or kicked out of their own land. Their temple, their main place of worship life and community life had been destroyed and the leaders had been dislocated and spread out in foreign lands. So to say that the people needed a message of hope is an understatement. This message that Isaiah gives the people is a message of recreation that I imagine the people were desperate to hear. It is the message that we are desperate to hear. I like to imagine that as Isaiah is giving his words, the people are listening, and at first they're going about their lives and kind of, you know, it's a kind of background noise, as many of the prophets often felt. But then he starts to say, For I am about to create a new heaven and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered. I am about to create a new city. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard or the cry of distress. Now the people are hanging on every word. Their interest is more than peaked. Their longing in their hearts is growing. I wonder what they are feeling as they hear this message. Are they skeptical? Are we skeptical? Can they even imagine the new reality that Isaiah is describing? Or are they reluctant to hear him as the pain of recent memories has created has created walls around their hearts. But perhaps there's a tinge of hope that is bubbling up within them. Because what they really long for, what we really long for, is the new thing that Isaiah describes. Yeah. I, too, am hanging on Isaiah's words, looking for hope, looking for the new thing that God is promising us. In fact, these words of Isaiah work their way deep into the imaginations of all who read this text. Even the authors of the New Testament are holding on to them many, many years later, as this text is quoted in the last book of our New Testament. The author of Revelations writes in chapter 21, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth have passed away. The sea was no longer. He, God, will wipe away every tear from their eye. There will be no more death, mourning or crying or pain, for the old, old order of things have passed away. The author continues, He who is seated on the throne has said, I am making all things new. And then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Isaiah's words remind the people, remind us, that the core of who God is, is God is the creator. God created in the very beginning, and God is still actively creating a new thing amongst us. And that is the hope of this message. It is the hope for the people, it is the hope for us today, that nothing is final that God has the power to recreate even in the midst of devastation. Because Isaiah and the author of Revelation know, and I think that deep down we know too, that at the heart of our faith is that we believe in a creator who emerges in the bleakest hour to make things new. I like to think about this passage in Isaiah much like I think about Dr. King's famous I Have a Dream speech. On that day in Washington, D.C., Dr. King laid out a dream that he had for his country, and more than that, he laid out a dream he had for his neighborhood that still rings in our ears today. I think what makes King's speech so timeless is that much like Isaiah, his dream was big, but it also felt just close enough to work. That 
What inspires us about Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech is that while he lays out a dream that is so big and so massive and so inclusive, it is also a clear call to action. This dream of Dr. King isn't a pie-in-the-sky kind of dream. Dr. King's dream isn't unachievable, but it's one that takes work every day. We do the daily work of dismantling racism both in our own hearts and our lives, but on a large systematic level as well. I see Isaiah's vision as much the same. He dreams of economic justice for all, a land where no one goes hungry, where people live long and prosperous lives. But you must hear the subtext of Isaiah's words. He is telling the people to take an active role in this process. He is telling the people to work hard every day to see glimpses of that kingdom come, of that new heaven and of that new earth. This passage is an invitation. It's an invitation to be co-creators with God to create alongside God a new heaven and a new earth. Isn't that what we are all longing for? <clears throat> One of my favorite hymns that we sang at Columbia Theological Seminary was called The Canticle of the Turning. The, the words to the song are relatively new, written in my lifetime, written by somebody not much older than me, and the chorus of the song goes, my heart shall sing of the day you bring. Let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears for the day draw near. And the world is about to turn. The world is about to turn. God's kingdom on earth is near. God's kingdom on earth looks like everyone having, getting their daily bread. Forgiveness of debts like deliverance from evil. Be aware that this dream is a future dream, yes, but there are also glimpses of this kingdom, of this dream, of this future in our everyday lives. The song goes on to say, The hungry poor shall weep no more for the food they can never earn. The tables are spread, every mouth be fed, for the world is about to turn. Friends, the world is indeed about to turn. And each day, we decide how serious our prayers really are. We decide if we want to, to co-create in a world where no one goes hungry, a world where those, who do, those do not labor in vain, where we eat together, where health is a priority for all people. Because that is what God's kingdom on earth, what it looks like. It looks like an end to the violence that plagues our lives. It looks like the hungry having enough. Every time we share a meal, that is God's kingdom on earth. Every time we stand up to injustice, that is God's kingdom on earth. Every time we are shown grace when we don't quite get it right, that is God's kingdom on earth. Every time we are welcomed in by another, that is God's kingdom on earth. So yes, May we pray for God's kingdom to come on earth. Let's pray with earnest and full hearts. But may we also be moved to action so that others may be able to see the big, glorious, all-encompassing, all-inclusive dream and that they may see and we may see the glimpse of God's kingdom here on earth. Amen. <laughs>